Hello, welcome back everyone. Uh, today we're going to get into section 6.1 on the area between curves. So when we learned about the fundamental theorem of calculus, we looked at finding the area underneath the curve and above the x-axis on a bounded interval. So here is point A, here is point B, here is our arbitrary function f, and we found a way to measure this area even if f was a curve. The idea in this section is now instead of between f and simply the axis, the x-axis, now we have a section function g and we're looking for only the area between f and g. Well this really is just building on what we've already done. We know how to find the area under f and above the x-axis. That would be the integral from a to b of f of x times dx. Similarly, we can find the measure for the area under function g on this interval a, b. That would be the integral from a to b of g of x times dx. Well, if you look at how they're related, f of x, the integral there tells us the full area. Area under g, that tells us basically how much we want to cut off. And whatever is left is our desired area. So then the area between f and g is the integral from a to b of the top function minus bottom function times dx. So find the total area, cut off what you don't need. So it is important to figure out though which one is the top function, which one is the bottom function. So in this section you are going to have to do a little bit of sketching of curves uh, before you jump into the problem. Uh, aside from that, really this is just building on what we did in the last section. So we'll start with finding the area between y is x squared minus 4 the x-axis, remember x-axis is y equals 0, and we'll do it on a couple different intervals. So we'll start on 1, 2. So y is x squared minus 4, you should hopefully recognize that as a parabola, vertex on 0, negative 4, opening up. Let's see, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So on this interval from x is 1 to x is 2, it looks like the x-axis is the top function. making the parabola our bottom function. So for this one, our area would be measured by taking the integral from 1 to 2 of top function 0 minus 
bottom function, x squared minus 4. Close it up, multiply by dx. So then we have integral from 1 to 2 of opposite of x squared plus 4, close it up, times dx. And just do your antiderivative from there. So negative 1 third x cubed plus 4x. Close them up, evaluate from 1 to 2. So we have negative 8 thirds plus 8 minus plugging in the 1, negative 1 third plus 4. So that gives us 5 thirds, or 1 and 2 thirds square units. All right, we're going to keep the same uh, two functions. We're going to go to a new interval, though. So now our interval is on negative 2, 2. So same boundaries, we have the, as a refresher, y is x squared minus 4, and y equals 0, just a new uh, left bound, right bound. So quick rough sketch, and notice these are the y-intercepts of the first function. So now our bounds negative 2 to positive 2. We want this entire region down here. So top function, again, throughout this entire section is the y equals 0. So for this area, we would do the integral from negative 2 to positive 2 of top function minus bottom function times dx. So integral from negative 2 to 2, a little simplifying inside, minus x squared plus 4, close it up, times dx. So negative 1 third x cubed plus 4x again, only different bounds, negative 2 to positive 2 this time. And so let's see, so we have negative 8 thirds. Uh, 2 by 4 is 8, which is 24 thirds. And plugging in the negative 2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives is a positive. So 8 thirds. And 4 by negative 2, negative 8, or negative 24 thirds. So negative 8 thirds minus 8 thirds, negative 16 thirds. And 24 thirds plus 24 thirds is 48 thirds. So, two, so 32 thirds square units, or 10 and 2 thirds square units. And our third one. Now we're going to look on the interval 0, 4. And again, just as a reminder, sometimes this will say from x equals 0 to x equals 4. Uh, that means the same thing as on this closed interval 0, 4. Uh, this time, though, you might notice that top function and bottom function switch partway through our interval. So here we'll just do a quick rough sketch. So here is the point 2, 0. Here's our 0, negative 4. And at 4, 16 minus 4, 12. So this is really going to be two separate 
pieces. The first chunk of this interval, the y equals zero is the top function, the curve is the bottom. For the second interval, obviously not drawn exactly to scale there. Uh, we'll go ahead and pretend that those are each two units apart. Uh, the curve is now the top function, the line is the bottom function. So we would have to add those two areas separately. So in the first interval, our area would be found by taking the integral from 0 to 2, where they meet, and our linear is the top minus our curve is the bottom. Close it up, multiply by dx. Our second interval goes from 2 to 4. I should switch up colors there. Our second is from 2 to 4, and our curve was the top one. Linear was the bottom one. Multiply that by dx as well. So after that, just a little simplifying, then take the antiderivative and then add the two separate answers on that. So we'll do integral from 0 to 2 of opposite of x squared plus 4, close it up, times dx, plus integral from 2 to 4 of x squared minus 4, close it up, times dx. So we have negative 1 third x cubed plus 4x. That's getting evaluated from 0 to 2, plus positive 1 third x cubed minus 4x. It's getting evaluated from 2 to 4. Alright, so a little bit of plug and chug later on those and we get a 16 thirds for the first guy and a 32 thirds for the second guy. So 40 thirds, which is 16 square units. Some of them above the axis, some of them below the axis. It just depends on which function is up top. But the total number of square units encased is 16. We just happen to have two closed off sections. Okay, so next we'll look at a linear that isn't just a plain boring one with the x-axis involved. So this time we'll find the area bounded by f of x is x squared minus 3, g of x is 4x plus 2. So first things first, you may notice they didn't give me a left bound and a right bound. This time I'm going to have to find them. So I'll set the functions equal, find out where they meet. So x squared minus 3 is equal to 4x plus 2. This will tell me where they have the same output. So x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So x minus 5 by x plus 1 is 0, so x is negative 1, or x is 5. So there's our bounds. Next we'll draw a quick little sketch of this and see which one is the top function, which one is the bottom function on this bound uh, on these given boundaries. So let's set up my scales here. So the first one, vertex is at 0, negative 3, parabola opening up. Our second one is linear, y-intercept at 0, 2, slope of 4, 
So up four, right one, and so on. So the area that was enclosed has the linear as the top, the curve as the bottom this time. So I want the integral from negative 1 left bound to positive 5 right bound. Top function minus bottom function. Close it up, multiply by dx. That dx does have to be there. Uh, and that is a good time for a reminder. Make sure you're showing your work on quizzes and tests. If it has no work, I can't give you credit for it. Okay, so integral from negative 1 to positive 5 of cleaning up inside, opposite of x squared, plus 4x, and let's see, we have a plus 2 and a plus 3, so plus 5, close it up, times dx, so negative 1 third x cubed, plus 2x squared, so 4 halves simplifies down to a 2, plus 5x, and we're evaluating from negative 1 to positive 5. So a little plug and chug on that. And we get, let's see, 100 third minus negative 8 third. So 108 third. Uh, so that's a nice, neat, pretty integer answer. So 36 square units. try one out and again just copy the problem down pause the video and we'll finish it out together so same directions as the rest in this section find the area bounded by we'll do f of x is x plus 1 g of x is x squared plus 4 x is negative 1 x is positive 2. Go ahead and pause it. Play when you're ready. Welcome back. So on this one, this time you were given left and right bounds. Uh, if you tried to set these equal to one another, you should notice that you get complex solutions. Uh, so these actually never do meet. Uh, so we would have to have selected some bounds. So our x squared plus 4 vertex at 0, 4 parabola opening up. Uh, the other function was just linear uh, x plus 1 y-intercept at 0, 1 and a slope of one, up one right one, up one right one, and down one left one, etc. And then we're looking between negative one and positive two. So the entire time for this one, our curve was the top, our line was the bottom. Again, that can vary problem to problem. So we'll do the integral from negative 1 to 2. So we just have one interval. Uh, top function was our curve, x squared plus 4, minus bottom function was our line. Close it up times dx. After that, just a little bit of simplifying. Integral from negative 1 to 2 of x squared minus x uh, plus 3 times dx. So we have a third of x cubed. That's a, I see 3, that is a 3 there. One third of x cubed minus half of x squared plus 3x. Close those in parentheses and we're evaluating that entire expression between negative 1 and a positive 2. So let's see, so that one we end up at 
believe it's 20 thirds uh, minus negative 23 six. So that is 46 plus 23 six. So that is 63 six. And then we can do a little simplifying then. That is uh, 21 halves or 10 and a half square units. Okay, so that should give you enough to uh, get started on section uh, 6.1. Uh, if you're in the old book, uh, 9 to 27 odd, 33 to 57 odd. If you're in the current edition, 9 to 25 odd, and 31 to 55 odd. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, otherwise, I will see you next time. Stay safe out there.